Hey guys, it's me Susila Adhikari for Health Info Nepal and in this video I'm going to tell you about the diffuse otitis externa. Okay, is the name suggest diffuse otitis externa means diffuse inflammation of external auditory canal. Okay, diffuse means it is not localized. Okay, it may involve the skin of pinna and the epidermal layer of tympanic membrane as well. Okay, so now let's discuss about the etiopathogenesis of diffuse otitis externa. Normally, this disease is more common in warm and hot climate. Okay, warm and humid climate. Okay, and it is more common in swimmers. Okay, what happens when there is the increased production of sweat? The pH of external auditory canal will be increased. Okay, so that the acidic pH will be alkaline okay this creates the favorable environment for the growth of the pathogens okay in that favorable condition if if there is any injury if there is any trauma to the external auditory canal okay it can be due to majestic or even it can be due to hairpin or it can be due to anything okay uh, this may predispose to the invasion of pathogenic organism okay and an invasion leads to infection okay diffuse infections of external artery canal may set up okay so uh, this is the pathogenesis and sometimes the infections of middle ear may spread to the external auditory canal and may lead to diffuse otitis external okay now let's discuss about the most common pathogens that causes diffuse otitis external okay some pathogens are staphylococcus aureus Another is Pseudomonas pyocyanin, another is Bacillus proteus, another is the Escherichia coli. Okay, these are some pathogens, but uh, uh, normally the mixed flora are involved in the uh, pathogenesis of this disease. Okay, now let's discuss about the clinical features of diffuse otitis externa with what complaint person come to your clinic. Okay, now clinical features of the diffuse otitis externa is divided into acute phase and chronic phase. Okay, now let's discuss about the acute phase of diffuse otitis externa. Okay? Normally, diffuse otitis externa begins with burning sensations, burning sensations in the external auditory canal. Okay. After a few, after some time, the burning changes it, it uh, gradually develop into the pain in the external auditory canal. Okay, along with the pain, there is the oozing of serous fluid in the external auditory canal. Okay, and gradually the serous fluid becomes purulent. Okay, and the external auditory canal is full of discharge and debris. Okay, and uh, due to that, the conductive hearing loss may develop in those patients. Okay. So, along with that, in several conditions, if the several condition becomes worse, okay, there can be the cellulitis and there can be tender lymphadenitis. Okay, these are some features of acute uh, phase of diffuse otitis externa. Now, if in chronic phase, the clinical symptom may be different. Okay, as we know, in acute phase, the main presenting symptom is the pain, but in chronic phase, the main presenting symptom will be irritation and excessive itching in the external auditory canal okay in comparison to acute phase the discharge will be scanty and the discharge may form the crust in external auditory canal okay there will be the swelling in external auditory canal is in acute phase okay along with that in uh, severe form there can be the stenosis of external auditory canal there can be hypertrophy of skin lining and this may lead to stenosis of external auditory canal okay and this stenosis is called chronic stenotic otitis externa okay now this is the clinical features of diffuse otitis externa now let's discuss about the treatment of diffuse otitis externa okay now let's first discuss about the treatment for acute phase okay for acute phase we do ear toileting okay uh, in ear toileting we remove the discharge and debris that are accumulated in the external auditory canal okay so after attention should be given to the anterior inferior inf anterior inferior meatus because at that reason pocket may firm and debris may be accumulated okay so special focus will be given to anterior inferior meatus of external auditory canal okay 
after your toileting what you do is we use medicated wick okay the gauze wick is soaked in antibiotic steroid preparations and it is kept in the external auditory canal okay and uh, after keeping that in external auditory canal patient is advised to make it moist by adding two to three drops of same uh, two to three drops of same antibiotic steroid preparations and it should be changed daily okay and this procedure is done for two or three days okay after three days we can use the antibiotic steroid drops in the external auditory canal okay now another treatment is what we do is we prescribe the anti-analgesic agent okay as we know the patient is complaining of pain okay the main presenting symptom is pain in acute phase we can give the analgesic agent to relieve the pain along with that if there is tender lymphadenitis and cerebritis okay we have to give the systemic broad spectrum antibiotic to get rid of infection okay now this is the treatment for acute phase for the chronic phase we have to focus on uh, for the treatment of the chronic phase the treatment should be focused for reducing the swelling of external auditory canal and to get rid of excessive itching as we know excessive itching is the main complaint in chronic phase okay so for chronic phase we have to use the wick that is soaked in 10 percent is ichthamol glycerin as we know glycerin has the hygroscopic action and ichthamol is mildly antiseptic so ichthamol glycerin ichthamol glycerin may be effective in chronic phase okay along with that we can use the steroid antibiotic preparations as well okay and antibiotic steroid preparations may help to get rid of itching okay so uh, another treatment modality is that for the for chronic stenotic otitis externa we have to drill the bony part of external artery canal and screen grafting should be done okay so this much for diffuse otitis externa and uh, thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe our youtube channel and if you like this video